name's Tom. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, training course in the UK. It's a topic that comes up quite frequently with the people who contact us uh, and obviously the differences between a service job and a training job in the NHS. Okay, so the first thing we're going to talk about are deaneries. So uh, every part of the UK um, in terms of the NHS is split up into different deaneries and there's a different deanery for each medical specialty. Now, the deanery is responsible for making sure that uh, doctors are rotating through the different specialties and subsets of those specialties, uh, ensuring that they get um, training in each area that they need to, uh, and also making sure that the standards are uh, to the right level. So making sure that um, you have all the support that you need um, and conducting annual reviews to make sure that what you're doing um, is to a high enough level and a high enough standard that's expected. So I suppose the next thing to talk about really uh, is training course and the training course is a course that is recognised by the deanery um, that I was just talking about. Um, competition for these spots are really really high, there are more applicants um, than there are jobs available uh, and so preference is given for doctors who are already working within the UK and um, that means unfortunately that IMGs may miss out um, on pursuing a training job in the first round. Um, our advice and what the majority of doctors tend to do is to take a service job uh, for the first year um, just until they're in the system and they're used to the way that things work. Uh, we'll talk more about that in just a second. Um, if you are successful at uh, getting into the uh, training programme, you would come in at an XT1 level, work your way up uh, to XT6, 7 or 8, depending on the specialty that you work within. Uh, and at that time, you'll be able to set your CCT or CCST, which is your Certificate of Completion of Specialist Training. Um, if you hold a Royal College qualification, so MRCP, MRCM, FRCA, FRCR, etc., um, then you should be able to bypass the first couple of years and come in more of an XT3 level. Uh, for people who choose that route, um, there's a decision uh, about whether or not you should sit uh, for your CCT. Um, you do have the option to pursue uh, CESAR as well, um, and that is just very much dependent on the background of the individual, so something to bear in mind. So what kind of support are you going to receive in your training job? Uh, the training curriculums are uh, pretty rigid, so you'll be uh, given monthly allocations. It might be in different hospital departments or different hospitals altogether within one region of the UK. Uh, and you will cycle through different interest areas of your chosen specialty. So if I use hematology as an example, uh, you might do three months within transfusion medicine. Uh, you then may rotate to do three months in paediatric hematology. Uh, you may do six months in uh, haemophilia or anticoagulation. Um, it really is just trying to cover off all of the different subset areas of your chosen field. Um, you'll also benefit from uh, study leave. Um, I'm sure that most hospitals have study groups, uh, depending on the specialty you're working with as well. Um, and you'll also have exposure to uh, clinical audit and governance, so you'll be able to conduct reviews uh, and build your portfolio uh, of, of internal governance that way as well. So, as I mentioned, uh, preference or priority is usually given for doctors who are already within the system, so those who are already in the UK working within the NHS. Um, a lot of doctors that we speak to in the international community are worried that that means that they'll be uh, set back or, or they won't be able to get a good job as their first job, um, and, and that's not true. Uh, so the option that um, a lot of people choose to take is a service job. Now, if you're more junior, uh, that may mean a service job for 12 months. Um, and you must ensure that you have your core competencies signed off in that time. So it doesn't mean that you're not going to get educational support from any hospital that you join. It just means that your program is not going to be recognised by the deanery. So, um, you know, it gives you a good chance to bed in, get to know the NHS healthcare system. And then at the end of that time, you could transfer into a different program. Uh, we have lots of doctors who uh, come to the UK, they'll take a service job maybe for 12 months and then they might decide to go into GP specialist training, they might decide to go into a different specialty altogether. Um, so there are still plenty of options uh, available for you. Um, for the more senior doctors uh, who have got more years of experience, training jobs might not be the best route to becoming a consultant. Um, if you have you know, five, six, seven, eight years or more of experience within one specialty, you probably don't want to go back to doing a junior doctor job and doing an ST1 job through training. So for those doctors, uh, we recommend that the CESAR route is, is better. Um, and it's always good to check that the hospital that you may be joining or that you get interview with can offer the CESAR support that you need. I think we've got another video that talks in a bit more detail about CESAR. 
So that's it. Thank you very much for uh, listening. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch. We'd be more than happy to hear from you. Uh, and of course, if you want some help finding your first job within the NHS, then um, you know, send us an email or get in touch via the phone. We'll be happy to help you. Thanks.